Greetings, everyone, and welcome to R. Kelly Appeal TV, where we discuss the topics of Robert Sylvester Kelly, the federal Brooklyn trial, as well as the federal Chicago trial. We are here today, which is the beginning day for uh, selection of jurors and to talk about the rules and the regulations and the guidelines that they're going to be put forth. There are some people who will be reporting back to us relating to what is going on in the courtroom in Chicago. Um, I'm unable to be there, but I just wanted to send a shout out to everyone and let everyone know that we thank them and appreciate them for being such a big, strong component to getting the information um, out regarding Robert Sylvester Kelly and what is going on in his life. So today we don't have much to report, but I do want to leave something. I have a throwback video that I uh, put on the channel a while ago, and I feel that it is you know, very respectful to bring it back up again at this given moment because we're going back to 2008. So I want to look at the concepts of why Robert Sylvester Kelly chose to call himself the King, the Pie Piper of R&B. And I feel that that's very important and vital to what's going on in the trial itself, um, starting back up, you know, bringing it back to the forefront. So let's take a listen to this video. I'm also sending a new shout out to uh, celebrating R. Kelly on Facebook with Daddy Lolo. Um, I'm saying that at this point, when I did the throwback video, it was 60,000 um, people who were part of the Celebrating R. Kelly uh, Facebook page. Now it's over 300,000. So we give shout out and celebration to Daddy Lolo for all the hard work, along with all of his moderators that do their part over there. They keep the information going so that we all can understand what's taking place. So here's the throwback. Thank you so much for liking, commenting, and sharing this podcast. I will see you um, as we see what motions come about from today's um, deliberation. All right, thank you. Here we go. How y'all feeling out there? A shout out to all 60,000 Kelly fans and celebrating our Kelly. Please join Facebook. That is a great place where you can find some of your old school things from R. Kelly and some new new situations that's coming up as well with um, a lot of relics, some you know videos from very rare footage. Um, it's a great place to to go. So celebrating R. Kelly on Facebook. That's a great, great page. Um, we still believe in you, Robert Sylvester Kelly. So don't give up and know that we are here supporting you, doing the best that we can to get the information out there for you. So today, I want to share a question that was given by one of the our Kelly Nation fans, and they were asking the question about why did R. Kelly title himself the Pie Piper of R&B? So, again, I welcome you today. So, I was curious about who the Pie Piper was, so I researched a little story, and I came to find the Pie Piper of Hamlin in the 1800s, and basically... Um, the story once was this extravagant guy walking through the village with extravagant clothing. He entered into a town that had a, a situation. And the situation had to do with um, having street infestations of rats. So he went to the head of the town with the promise if he removed the invasion of the pest, would they pay him? They promised that they would pay the piper if he had removed them fully. The piper lured the rats into the forest with his mesmerizing flute. The rats loved the music so much that they drowned themselves in the river by going over the cliff. So the piper returned to the village, letting them know that the infestation had been removed. At that time, the town refused to pay the piper for work performed. So the piper then retaliated against the town by luring his children to follow the piper as they were mesmerized by his music. 
So feel free to review the rest of the story in this detail, and it is located in our description box below. Then I heard a song by R. Kelly, and I can't remember the name of it, but it did have a statement where R. Kelly was saying, I'm the Pied Piper of R&B, y'all. So I just wondered what that represented. Of course, when I went to look for the video, I recognized that the music was removed. And uh, I just come to the conclusion that no one wants to be responsible uh, for the actions that everyone in the industry was fully aware of. You know, many people knew what was going on and whatever was taking place. Um, mm -mm -mm. And if you can remember the song I'm speaking about when he starts off, hey, I'm the king of R&B or I'm the king, Pied Piper um, of R&B. Let me know in the comment box below. I am getting over a slight sinus infection and I'm feeling much better now. But um, I had to get on here to do this video, so please bear with me. So after I reviewed the Pied Piper story, I went a bit further and found what the moral of the story was all about. Since it was a fairy tale, and many of us know that um, fairy tales are truly real stories, I found that mostly it follows this classic fairy tale of the um, Pied Piper of Hamlin that notes two morals. The first moral is if you've promised someone something, let us keep our promise. Simply put, a man ought to keep his word. The moral of the, tri of the tale is that cheating people can have unexpected and dreadful consequences. The term Pied Piper has entered the language in the sense of someone who, by means of spiritual charm, entices people to follow him or her, usually to disappointment or misfortune. Complete with the moral about integrity and sticking to a fair deal, the story integrates the grief imagery of what is going on in the streets of Hamlin with the lofty character of this epiphemous Piper. A shout out to all listeners on the podcast, E. Scott, Sophia I, Daryl H., Kathy W., and many more. Um, what do you guys feel about this Pie Piper situation? Do you feel that it was something that was post upon Kelly that maybe he didn't understand what he was saying um, because, you know, we do have a situation of um, dyslexia or being able to, you know, not being able to read or write. Um, so looking a little bit at the Pied Piper coming from his own mouth, these are things that a few Kelly fans did note. He grew up in the streets of Chicago. He sold his music talents in the streets of Chicago. He was abused, trapped in a closet by his older sister, Teresa. That closet could have been his escape from his own reality. The Pied Piper imagery could again reflect what he felt about being taken advantage of. Something such as a subliminal message to both his sister and the people who took advantage of him on the streets and in the music industry. The performances that he did without payment. So let's go to a few scenarios. Scenario number one. After being forced to perform sexual acts with his older sister and choosing not to, to do so, imagine he said no. She would trap him in the closet. From there, he could make a pact with himself that he would one day free all kids and take them away from their painful life like what he was experiencing. And he would do this with his music. Um, a lot of times when we have been sexually or um, sexually abused, we may possibly think we're helping when we're hurting. Um, or scenario B. He became a number one R&B international singer and was promised something that was not received. So he made the deal with the devil that would be able to do what he wanted to, to have her. We know that when making pacts with the devil, the devil will always win. You know, we got to be very careful. Um, the devil seems to change the rules in the middle of the game. So if we look at the movie industry, the music industry, as long as things make money, 
There is no room for error. There is always a way out. Many R. Kelly fans agree with the fact that the case is a governmental conspiracy, a cover-up that said we allowed R. Kelly to keep us fed in America through his talents. When we would make more money than what tours and talent could give us, we would then sell ourselves to the highest bidder. So imagine those 50 women on a docuseries. That's multiple streams of income with a book deal. They could go on TV, America, with information versus setting up a tour, paying R. Kelly to perform the tour, and putting out their money. They're going to get money. So the industry was looking at the multiple streams of income much more than what the R&B singer could bring in, even with new collaborations in the industry that we haven't even heard yet. You know, these parents were stating facts that went unheard for one quarter of a century. And then women were pulling out the race cards stating black women are not heard in America. We have all these self-help talk shows, okay? Oprah, Steve, Gail King. I mean, we have all these shows to tell people about the severity of self-help. And then you have the Dream Hampton and the book signings. To move money. This is where the energy flows. And it has nothing to do with his talent. Because it fades. And people get reduced. So for all of the R. Kelly fans that asked for this episode, please do not let this get you down. Hold on to your faith. This is a time where the source of your existence, the God within, the source of your spiritual understanding must flow through you. Make it a point to stand in your beliefs. Um, he has been convicted of doing these acts. However, we must stand firm in our convictions about who we love, who we admire, and who we thank for all that has been done over the time that R. Kelly has been in our lives. Everyone has a right to their opinion, yet never let it sway you. It's so sad how the world is changing its face during this pandemic, as if it is trying to take away all the love in the world, making us inhumane and just non-emotional people with no understanding of feelings. This is no music. There is no music that touch our souls as much as the king of R&B. Where is the Kelly sound, even in those after him? So tell me what you feel about this segment. Did it help to answer some questions that you may have relating to why R. Kelly titled himself the Pie Piper? And is that going to affect what he may run into based on his own admissions? I feel this is another opportunity for the world to talk, to share, and to have an, an independent opinion that is top news in America. This is a good thing. It is not good to use another human being as a disposal to keep one another talking, but it is how America works through media. Do you think he was forced into making himself the Pied Piper character for the sake of saving his innocence in 2008? Being found not guilty on all the charges back then and just going with the flow, not knowing what would eventually come in the years later? Some say that he didn't read. Did someone share their version of the Pied Piper that was something different than what was Googled today to get him to go along with the program since his own future was involved in signing his own incarceration? Now being convicted of those same charges today sort of sounds like what the devil is known for doing. Ironic packs. Again, I shout out to all the, our new subscribers and I will eventually make a episode of our new subscribers and their post and what they're saying to consider as conversation. Please join us every Sunday, 6 p.m. 
for our premiere of the R. Kelly Appeal TV. And as always, keep it 100, and we'll see you next time.